my name is Peter Mothy, and I'm going to share some charts with you today to discuss the Fed's most recent action, which was no action. It's what people are calling the pause or the skip in its most recent efforts to raise interest rates and slow the economy. Well, let's take a look at the first chart, which gives us some perspective over the last five years about where the Fed funds effective rate has been and where we are today. If we go back to 2018, which is the left-hand side of the, the image on your screen, in 2018, as the economy was moving along nicely, the economy was fairly strong, inflation was relatively low, and the effective funds, Fed funds rate moved up to about two and a half percent which is where it stayed for much of 2019. Well, as the economy began to get into trouble with COVID in 2020, interest rates dropped fairly significantly and rapidly all the way down to zero. This is an unprecedented um, level for federal funds uh, here in the United States. Foreign countries, much of Europe, for an example, was at that level for quite a while, simply because their economy was so slow. Well, since 2022, the United States has raised its interest rates, the Federal Reserve has done this, from zero all the way up to five to five and a quarter percent, which was done earlier this year in 2023. And then the most recent action by the Fed was to say, all right, time out, we're going to take a look and see what the impact on the economy is. Now, the Fed has always said that their actions are going to be uh, data driven. This is nothing new. This is something they've been saying all along. However, this is the first time in uh, over a year that the Fed has decided to take no action at an important meeting. Now, the graph below the Fed funds effective rate here is the graph of what I am displaying here is the median consumer price index inflation rate. Now, this is this is not taken by the whole basket, which can be distorted by things that are up a lot, things that are down a lot. This is taking the whole list of things that are in that inflation measure and picking the median of those items. It gives you just a little bit different but I think in many ways, a more effective um, view of inflation. And you can see that as inflation started to go up from all the way down at about one to one and a half percent in 2020 and late or early 21, all of a sudden inflation went all the way up to 8%. And it stuck there for quite a while. It's this fear that inflation is high and going to stay high that has driven much of the Fed's action and much of the Fed's intention to raise interest rates. The logic here, of course, is that as interest rates go up, the economy should slow down. And as the economy slows down, then the push towards higher and higher prices should subside. Now, this is one of the things we're starting to see the leading edge of is the impact of this increase in interest rates on the economy. Now, if we take a look at the Federal uh, Reserve's dot plot, this is no more than a view of the, each of the voting members of the Federal Reserve uh, Board and giving their consensus view or their individual view of where they think interest rates should be as we go out into time. Now, what's important about this is two things. Number one, that we are likely to see interest rates come down in the years ahead. Now, let's get, give a little bit of a, a view here in terms of time frame. This dot plot on the left is for 2023, then 24, then all the way out to 2025, and then beyond 2025. Notice that beyond 2025 gets us back to this about 2.5% level, which is an appropriate level for Fed funds, if indeed inflation at is at two or below two percent a year. Now, the other thing that's noteworthy about this 
is that uh, several months ago, the market as a whole was expecting interest rates to be down at this level, at the 4% level, before the end of 2023. And the Federal Reserve's own dot plot here is making it very clear that they don't see interest rates going down at all during the course of the rest of 2023. That was a bit of a surprise for the, the credit markets in particular. Now, the last chart I have to show you is another chart which has to do with the M2 money supply. This is the broad measure of the money supply. What's important about this is that the money supply is what is the fuel for the economy. When the money supply is growing, there is a lot of fuel for economic growth. When the money supply is shrinking, then what we're doing or what the Fed is doing deliberately is taking fuel out of the economy. So we can see that the Federal Reserve and its actions, not only through interest rate increases, but also through its, uh, it's not shown here by graphics, uh, they're shrinking their balance sheet, which just simply means that they're no longer injecting money into the economy through their bond purchases. Now, as a result of this shrinking money supply and the shrinking balance sheet of the Federal Reserve and the increased level of interest rates, we should expect the economy to cool. And, and the concern, of course, is whether or not we're going to have a, a recession. Time will tell. We'll be back to visit this after future Fed meetings. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm.